Senate. My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. Uh, my Lords, the Government has no plans to promote national awareness of the EU legislative process. However, information regarding the EU lawmaking process is in the public domain. The Gov.uk website, the Parliament's website and the EU Commission website are just some of the many sources which explain the role of the EU institutions in the legislative process. Lords, I, I thank the Noble Lord for that answer to this question, which I tabled because I can't find anyone normal who has heard of Coropa. Uh, and, and thus understands the process which destroys our democracy. So, my lords, wouldn't it help the government's Brexit strategy if more people knew that the unelected commission, only the unelected commission, can propose new laws, upon which national interests are then negotiated in the unelected committee of permanent representatives, and which are then signed off in the council, all behind closed doors, with nothing this parliament can do about it? and that the Commission then becomes the executive for all EU law, subject only to the Europhile Court of Justice in Luxembourg, against which there is no appeal. Second question, my Lords. Oh. Second question, my Lords. Would it, wouldn't it also help if more people knew that we are nearly always outvoted in the Council and that this process Not has true. made over 20,000 of our laws since Not 1972, true. or more than one a day. Good fantasy. I uh, thank the noble lord for his uh, many follow-up uh, questions. I suppose from the first part of his uh, question, as, uh, as somebody that has heard of co I suppose that makes me uh, abnormal, so I apologise to the noble <laughs> to the opposition agreeing with that one. Um, <laughs> Uh, so uh, yeah, I thank the noble lord for, for that. Uh, I'm really not sure what he's saying here. I mean, if he is saying to us that UKIP now thinks it's a good idea for us to spend public money on an exercise educating the public on EU legislative processes, I suggest to him this would be an unusual position for UKIP to take. What is important is that, uh, about the European Parliament is today is the last day of the old Parliament. Tomorrow is the first day of the new European Parliament, and it has to give its consent, the new Parliament, to whatever withdrawal deal we agree. So could the Noble Lord the Minister tell us what talks they're having with the new makeup of the Parliament so that we have an agreement which will be acceptable to them? Well, I mean, we are, of course, constantly having discussions with uh, old and new MEPs. Indeed, last week I was in Brussels talking to some of the old members of the European Parliament and some of the new uh, elected ones to try and, uh, and put forward our position. But, of course, at the moment there's a bit of an interregnum whilst we have uh, a leadership uh, election. But when we have a withdrawal agreement to, uh, to, to put to them, then the noble lady is, of course, quite right that the new European Parliament will have to agree it, as, we, as indeed will this Parliament. I declare an interest as a uh, joint editor of a series of books on lawmaking in the European Union, uh, and I'm quite prepared to uh, allow the. I'm prepared to allow the, the noble lord, Lord Pearson, to, to read it. I know that Sir William Cash has read it, so perhaps he would like to. Um, is it not the case that when, we, when and if we leave the European Union, it will be all the more important for people interested in? Policy making in Britain to understand the policy making of the European Union because outside it we shall still be influenced by decisions taken in Brussels and in other national capitals, and we need to know and understand those processes. Yeah. 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 Well, as someone who sort of worked in institutions for 15 years, then uh, I think it took me all of that 15 years to understand it uh, sometimes. I actually do think it's important to uh, understand how the EU legislative process works. But I'm delighted to hear that the noble lord will allow Lord Pearson to, uh, to read his books. Perhaps if I could act as a bit of a matchmaker here, he might want to send him some copies, and then he wouldn't uh, need to detain us asking us questions about it. <laughs> my lords, is my noble friend aware of the old saying in the army that time spent on reconnaissance is rarely wasted? In other words, one ought to know what the other side are doing, and one ought to be aware of their decision-making processes. And no doubt he will have followed closely, I hope he has, the various tractations between Switzerland and the European mm -hmm. Union who are engaged in almost permanent negotiations, as will be the case with us. Now, would he not feel, therefore, that a certain amount of knowledge about how the other side works and how they take decisions 
would enable British public opinion to judge more easily the policies that the government pursues? Well, I, uh, noble, I know the, know the noble lord, of course, uh, also understands the, the workings of the EU extremely well from his time in the, in the European Commission. But actually, I have been following the, the discussions with uh, Switzerland uh, quite closely. I note that there is uh, not yet an, an agreement. Um, but, of course, we will want to see how that, uh, how that pans out and what implications, if any, it has for our negotiations. My Lords, isn't the practical reality that this question comes a little late in the day, in fact, 40 years too late, <laughs> and that if we had had a better understanding of all these issues at the start, we wouldn't be in the pickle we're in now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there may be some truth in that, but if I had... Uh, any criticisms of the EU systems, and 